Esther Molly Gilman, peace be unto all of you. I'm here today, I just wanted to share with you briefly my story as to how and why I converted to Islam. Um, so I'll just get started. Um, so growing up, I actually was raised in a very um, devout Catholic household. Um, without fail, my parents used to bring us to church every single Sunday. We used to practice all of the holidays and celebrate all the holidays and the um, religious sense. My parents would fast on Fridays. Um, I actually went to Catholic school my entire life. Um, so definitely very well versed in the Catholic faith. Um, but the one thing I will say is even just growing up, I did know a lot about the faith, but I was never really brought to think about why I was particularly doing things, or you wouldn't really think very deeply into theology particularly. And, um, you know, it was after the fact when I finished high school and I started going to um, post-secondary education, like college, university. That was when I finally actually started thinking a little bit about my faith. Maybe it was the rebellious sense in all of us when we finally become somewhat independent and we want to be our own person, but definitely it was a little bit more than that. Um, I remember, you know, just going to school after the fact and it was the first time in my life I was actually um, intermingling with people that were not of the same faith group with me. Um, just because, you know, going to a Catholic school all my friends were Catholic, um, you know, I was a good girl, I never really went out a ton, so I can't say that I really had a lot of friends outside of my faith group. Um, but when I actually went to college, university, I actually for the first time interacted and met, you know, um, Muslims as an example, and it kind of made me think about my faith in a greater sense. Like, I remember, you know, just going to church and thinking, for the first time in my life, like, you know, we are not supposed to be worshipping idols, so why do we even have, um, you know, like, statues inside the church that people are praying towards? Or, if we're supposed to be praying to the one God, like, why are we praying to the Virgin Mary? Or why are we praying to other people in saints when, you know, God is the creator of all things and God is the Almighty? Um, in that sense, like, I just kind of raised a lot of questions or started thinking simply about, um, you know, Trinitarian issues and the fact that if Jesus was praying, who is he praying to if he is God? Or why would he be in need particularly? Like, a lot of these things, no matter who I would talk to, wouldn't really have a great resolution. Um, you know, just to name a, a couple of other things, like if God, if God is eternal, then how could God die? Like I really just couldn't wrap my head around um, a lot of these issues. And the more research I did, the more I realized that um, a lot of these theological issues came after the fact. And the pure Christianity was actually Unitarian. Um, but it was the later kind of additions that changed the faith to make it what we what we know it as today, particularly, um, meaning kind of more of a Pauline Christianity. But I won't get into that. Um, so generally, at that point, that was kind of when I was questioning a little bit more. Um, but I really didn't have much of a solution. I just had questions. Um, I started kind of looking into agnosticism um, just because I figured, you know, if Christianity is wrong and, you know, all of these other religions are quote unquote um, polytheistic and I can't really accept that. They're either polytheistic or not, they're not particularly religions. They're more um, kind of like ways of thinking and whatnot. Um, I don't really want to be involved with any of these, and I never really found a good monotheistic solution, but at the same time, I wasn't really looking much into religion. Um, you know, but then it got to a point where I actually got in discussion about religion with um, some Muslims, actually, when I was at school. Um, and I really didn't know much about their faith, to be quite honest. I had all of the stereotypical kind of ideas as to what Islam actually was. You know, the fact that it was um, terrorist mongering and a violent faith and, you know, they just want to convert everyone by the sword, quote unquote, 
or, you know, intolerant, they just want to kill everybody that didn't agree with them, you know, very, very um, shallow kind of ideas as to what this faith was. But the more I, I kind of um, started asking questions about it, the more I was kind of finding myself strangely attracted to this religion, basically because of the fact that they believed in the existence of the one God, they believed in God's oneness, they believed in God's eternity, everlastingness, um, you know, but without all of the mental confusion. It was just, you know, basically belief was broken down into the fundamentals and it was something that everyone would be able to di digest without actually having to do any mental gymnastics. Um, so, long story short, um, I started looking a little bit further into Islam, not really wanting to particularly accept it as my religion, but still attracted to it nonetheless. Um, I started taking a religious studies course where I actually was able to look at Islam from an unbiased, kind of scholarly perspective, and again, I found myself kind of being attracted to it because of its, um, you know, rationality. Um, and the fact that Islam could meet kind of belief in science halfway, it was irrational, or it was rational, sorry, but it had proof at the same time. It wasn't just asking you to believe without any questioning or proof whatsoever. So again, looking into the Quran, I found the exact same thing. Um, you know, Allah would command his servants to question or think about things or ponder about things and that was something that I definitely wasn't used to previously with the Bible and something that was very attractive for me. Actually pondering and meditating about my religion, um, you know, it kind of gave me some kind of peace in my heart that I was really again becoming very attracted to but again I wouldn't accept Islam as my religion until I was entirely sure about it. Um, you know, so again, reading more into the Quran, I was finally also able to put Judaism and Christianity into perspective, um, particularly looking into the role of prophets. Um, Jesus is seen in Islam as a prophet and not, uh, not being divine. And again, if you look at the Bible from a Quranic perspective, you'll see again all of these proofs in the Bible. The fact that Jesus, peace be upon him, attests to the oneness of God and never anywhere in the Bible does he ever claim divinity, um, simply. Um, you know, so reading into the Quran, it was slowly kind of answering questions for me. You know, when I would bring up all of these horrible arguments that I would see online and whatnot, um, to people of faith that were actually well versed in their religion, um, you know, I would always find some kind of resolution. Whenever I had a question about Islam, I always thought that it would kind of be a breaking point, and this would be the reason why I can't particularly believe in this faith, but it always ended up being to the contrary. And, you know, along my journey, I was probably looking into Islam for maybe about, I would say, two years or so. And it was continuously the same thing where it was just, it was working for my benefit and not on the contrary. And basically, whenever I would see all of these negative comments online or get all these not negative comments from people or even myself argue with people, it would just bring me to gather more knowledge about the religion and actually got me to a point where I was very comfortable accepting Islam for what it was, um, but I still didn't make that final step of um, affirming my faith. And then I found it was actually just one very last driving point that brought me to accepting Islam. When I, when I was actually um, very close to accepting Islam, I was um, doing an internship in Edmonton um, where I was, yeah, I was in school at the time. And this was coming to an end and I was on my way back to Calgary um, where I would actually be living with um, my older sister for the first time in many years because she had actually been in Edmonton for um, university and I was in Calgary. It was just a big jumble. But anyways, so that was the very first time I would be living with her um, in years. And I just remember one morning 
I remember this very vividly, and it was actually the middle of Ramadan. Um, I wasn't practicing or anything yet at that point. I'm still looking into Islam, but I heard like some crazy rustling noises and business going on in the kitchen. And I was like, what is this? What is going on? Um, and it was really early in the morning. And then I found my sister in there eating a bowl, bowl of cereal and like she had all this food around her. And I kind of questioned her as to what she was doing. And I realized at that point that she was... Um, trying to attempt to fast um, so everything kind of came together at once and I realized that at the same time when I was looking into Islam my sister was also even though we were separately living in completely different cities and didn't talk about religion whatsoever we were actually going through the exact same thing so that kind of brought me to a point where I was feeling a little bit more comfortable in my decision um, you know to potentially accept Islam and my sister and I we ended up actually going to a lot of um, religious lectures and lessons together and kind of furthering our knowledge together and searching together and we got to a point a few months later where we actually ended up attesting and our, affirming our faith um, in Islam together and saying our Shahada Alhamdulillah and since then it's been about four years so I've um, since then you know, my life has changed dramatically um, for the better. Finally, as a person, I just, I feel so whole, you know, before Islam, I would, I would go to bed at night and I would honestly not be able to sleep because I felt like I was purposeless. And I felt like, you know, extreme fear of, you know, what was going to happen to me. You know, am I just like this lump of flesh and I'm just going to die and rot in the ground? Like I just really felt unfulfilled and I felt like there was no purpose for me. But in my life now, I can say that every single moment of every day, I feel like I'm accounting for it. And I actually have a purpose and our purpose is to worship the creator and, our devo and devote our life to the creator in the way that he has outlined in the Quran. Um, very, very simply speaking. Um, but anyways, so that's my story. I'm going to keep it short and leave it at that. But inshallah, um, I hope any of you out there um, perhaps benefited from this story. And I hope to be of service to anybody, um, you know, with any questions about Islam whatsoever. Um, I would love to kind of dispel any myths and use my knowledge that I gained over the past couple of years to, you know, maybe inspire you guys in some some way or at least provide you with some knowledge or answer any of the questions that you've been burning to have answers to. Um, but for now, assalamu alaikum.